Hi, everyone. Welcome to the MRP Tech Podcast. This is episode 187. My name is Matt, and this is the weekly podcast discussing everyday tech for everyday people. And um, over the last few days, I have stopped into my school district where I work and um, had some packages arrive for the uh, things that I had requisitioned for the up and coming year. And it has been a while since I put that information in. And uh, basically, it was last January. And uh, last January, February rolled around. And then March, of course, uh, we were out of school for several months. And one of the things that I've been working on is um, sort of the ed tech center at my school. And um, this year, I wanted to replace the older Raspberry Pis that we're using in, in our EdTech Center with Raspberry Pi 4. And um, there's there's a couple of different things that we're doing with the Raspberry Pis. A lot of them are being used for displays around the school um, where we could uh, remote in and have, um, you know, a welcome to school like banner or information, school lunch menus, that type of thing. And rather than climbing up behind a TV and plugging in a laptop or, or that type of thing. Uh, we, we plug in a Raspberry Pi and then we can remote in and, and fix all of those things, um, you know, from a web browser, basically. And um, so we're, we're replacing the, uh, I think they're Pi 3Bs at this point. Uh, there may be a Pi 2 as, as well. And I've got some plans this year to um, not only social distance the students, but really just uh, rebuild a couple of things in our ed tech center. Uh, our IRLP node is, is on an ancient uh, Dell desktop and um, found out recently it's fairly easy to set up IRLP on a Raspberry Pi uh, for our IRLP node uh, for amateur radio. And if I can remove the desktop and just run out of Pi, number one is low power. Uh, number two, it's... Um, much more easy to manage, and um, I, I uh, do some testing with it if I if I get around to uh, building that node again, and um, we'll see if it works better. Um, I hear I hear a lot of people are having a lot of great things and a great success with um, using Raspberry Pis for IRLP. So uh, I'm really interested in doing that this year. But what I really wanted to talk to you all about today is uh, I mentioned this last time in last last time's episode, episode number 186, that I've been involved with a, a sort of hometown issue, so to speak. And basically, we had a bunch of uh, really historic bridges that uh, each of them are, are one of a kind in our town. And each of them were built, uh, one was built in 1854, another one was built in 1877, another one was built in 1888, and another one in 1890. Um, And for the most part, the bridges are in pretty good shape. They're just closed because they don't meet certain specifications that allow them for modern traffic and can be upgraded. It's just a matter of money and politics and all this stuff. So I've been working hard for the last two weeks to come up with a way to present um, to town and county officials the reason why these are vital in my particular town. Now, the tricky part is there's a river that cuts through our town, and on each side of the river, there are two townships, and on each side of the river, there are two counties, and on each side of the river, there are two Department of Transportation regions. And so nothing will ever get done unless somebody um, stirs up the the nest a little bit and gets people buzzing about it. And uh, for over 12 years, nobody has done anything uh, like what I've been trying to do. Other people have tried in different ways, and um, thankfully to them, it got some motion in progress. And I decided to try something different. And basically just because something that I particularly care about and... um, when I get moving on something like this, um, I really get hyper focused. And what I wanted to talk to you all today is this isn't a normal thing for me. In fact, public speaking in general has been something that I never really cared for doing in the past. And many people out there are afraid to speak publicly. Many people 
loathe being in front of people, talking, hearing their voice heard um, by other people. Some people won't even step up on a stage because of stage fright, being in front of an audience, performance, anxiety, all these things that are associated with um, being a public speaker. And I myself am a relatively shy person. I don't like to get up and, and talk in front of people. In fact, for many years, even as a teacher, I sort of struggled with that um, skill. And I was I was never really terrible at it, but I was never as good as I could have been. And um, number one, it was one of the reasons why I started this podcast, is I wanted to be a better, better speaker. And if you go back and you listen, you, you know I'm not a, a really great speaker. Uh, my podcast is full of uhs and ands and every other noise as I think what I'm going to say. And I've been trying to get better at that over time. The best thing that I can do is give some recommendations on um, what I think is necessary for someone to speak, whether it is for your job or if it is for something in your hometown that you'd like to um, talk to your town board about, or if you're giving a presentation and you've never done it before. All of these things that I've sort of picked up from podcasting, from being a director of an orchestra, or being a teacher. I want to share some things with you about my approach to public speaking. Now, my goal as a public speaker is to never be perfect. There is no reason you need to think like that. You don't need to be a perfect public speaker. In fact, when I watch videos of public speakers who have honed their craft it sort of puts me on edge, especially politicians or public speakers who are uh, maybe motivational speakers trying to get you to buy in on their particular um, form or mastery of whatever it is that they're trying to present. If everything they say is absolutely perfect, red flags go up for me. Number one, they're so overprepared or they've done this so many times that they know exactly what to expect from an audience and they've rehearsed and it's flawless. That type of thing sends up red flags to me for some reason. doesn't mean it's necessarily right, but in, from my own perspective, red flags go up. Um, so here's what I have done, okay? So with this whole situation with the bridges, for years, everybody was saying that somebody should do something about it. And I was sort of expecting somebody to do something about it. And one of the bridges was scheduled to be removed and it happens to be a local favorite. It's vital. Um, so I just sort of off the cuff came up with a plan to see what I could do. And my plan, I have, I have nothing invested in this at all. It's summer vacation for me. I, I am working, um, but I now, I'm not at school. I'm not dealing with everyday stresses of school, thankfully. And I had some time to think about it. And really, everything that I needed to do would be online. I'd be sitting on my couch, sending emails and messages and create a Facebook page and stir up the uh, nest and get people buzzing about it a little bit and see if there was interest. So the first thing that I did was created a change.org petition. And sure enough, within just a couple of days, there was a couple of hundred signatures and went from 200 to 300 to 400 to 500. And I knew that this is what people wanted. And so it was something that our community wanted. But when it came to the uh, county officials, where the, the topic has been traditionally very difficult discussion and where everything always gets dropped, that's going to be a bit more of a challenge. So I knew I needed to present well. And I've spoken in front of a town board once before on issues in a community that I lived in. Now, back then, I would consider that my my very first real public speaking attempt. And I, and I did a pretty good job with that. And I sort of used the skills that I learned from presenting there and applied it to this new session. Now, I'm not somebody who will get up in front of a town board at every meeting and complain about things that are happening in town or not happening in town. I've never spoken in front of a county board before, um, the county board of supervisors or whatever you want to call it, 
for your area. And so I started thinking that I have nothing to lose here. Um, I'm going to go and I'm going to present in the best way possible the reasons for keeping these historic bridges in our town. And um, basically what I did is I got prepared first. And the meetings actually came up much faster than I was expecting. And the actually the most important meeting happened to be the first one. Because I actually had to, I have to present four times. I have two towns to present to and two counties. And um, basically with the first county meeting being the important one, um, what I did is number one, I had to get the information real fast and I had to know what I was talking about. Being a hometown, it was relatively easy to do. Um, I was able to go to the town supervisor and I was able to get documents from the past efforts on to save these bridges. And I got myself prepared a little bit. So I think as a public speaker, being as prepared as possible for what you're presenting is, is going to make or break you. And whether or not there's arguments to your case, you have to be prepared for what are the arguments going to be. And you have to have your answers ready and you have to have it all thought out ahead of time what other people are going to say. So I presented to the County Board of Supervisors, which are um, the highest elected officials in my area. And what I did is uh, the meeting was supposed to start at 10 a.m. and I arrived an hour early. I did not go into the building an hour early. But what I did is I sat in the parking lot and I reviewed the notes that I created for uh, what I was going to say. And I reviewed it a few times. I had practiced it a couple of times out loud at home. And I sort of timed how long it was going to be, knowing that I was probably going to get cut off at some point in time. Because usually with a town board meeting, you're only allowed maybe five minutes to speak or, you know, at the most 10. And so mine was about an eight minute speech that I wanted to talk about. And so being prepared is the first thing that I suggest. If you're doing any type of public speaking, know your facts, know what you want to say, put it in a logical order and, and use notes. Um, now, some people like to memorize what they're going to say. Having the notes to look at doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to read from it. You know, if you're prepared, you're going to remember most of it. So you can, if you, if something slips your mind, you can check your notes real quick. So I think it's really important being prepared, knowing your facts, having notes to use and rehearsing that many times before you get to that public speaking uh, venue. So that is a system that seems to work for me when it comes to really important things. So I presented to the county board the most important meeting first, and it just so happens to be that a state assembly member was there um, for different reasons at the meeting, and he and his um, chief of staff were actually very impressed with the way that I approached things. So this was a very stressful situation for a lot of people. And my approach was to change the dialogue. So I did not go in with um, torches and pitchforks yelling and screaming for change. The first thing I did was ask for help. And I asked, I asked them for, for their help, for their support and wanted to change the dialogue because traditionally it had been very difficult. And the state assembly member was so impressed when he left the meeting, he actually called the town supervisor and asked for a walkthrough of all these bridges. So we actually met later on in the week and we took a walkthrough, um, which I thought was a um, very nice thing for this, this particular person to do and took time out of his busy schedule to come and see. And the next thing is trying to convince all of these people with past history to leave the past history behind and look for new avenues, new ways to figure out how to make all this work. We have two closed bridges. One bridge isn't being maintained. Another bridge needs maintenance um, from flood damage. And they're all vital routes through our town. And when you drive into town, our heritage is these bridges. It's, 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 think of my town as like a mini Pittsburgh. Um, there was It was a massive uh, steel industry at one point in time. And 
iron ore industry. Um, they made horseshoe nail factory. They had horseshoe nail factories all along the river at one point in time. It was an industrial place. And each of these bridges had vital roles and they do now in modern society. So it was a very difficult thing to, um, number one, submit a petition with at that point over 700 signatures. The petition now has over a thousand, which was my goal. And I knew the community supported it. Elected officials, especially in New York State, where there's no money, supposedly, um, it's going to be a much different different conversation. So I have to put it in the light of voters and taxpayers and that type of thing. Now, I'm not a very political person. In fact, I usually try to avoid politics. So I'm acting as sort of a middle person here between the community, between the towns, between the counties, eventually between the two different DOT regions. And I've got to think like the person I'm talking to or speaking to does. And whether it's talking to a a highway superintendent or I'm talking to a county official, elected county official or a town elected uh, position, I've got to think about all the what different things that they have to worry about. Now, a highway superintendent is going to be concerned about not just a couple of bridges in one town. He's got to con- he's got to uh, worry about 150 other bridges in the entire county. So there is a lot to consider with all of these things. And being as prepared as possible is any time that you're doing a public speaking project is number one and vital. The more prepared you are, the more successful you will be. And the thing that I have trouble with is one, when I speak and I get on a roll, I speak faster and faster and faster. And I try to not waste people's time. But at some point, my brain is working on overdrive and I'm speaking much faster than everyone can comprehend. Because my focus is these bridges in Keysville, and this is all I've thought about for for two weeks now, where these elected officials are thinking about everything else that's going on, COVID, um, you know, bills and other things that they need to pass. It's very tricky to, you know, give them every single piece of knowledge that you have in eight minutes. So next I presented to a more willing audience, which was the town's and sought their approval and support for this project. Of course, the towns are in support uh, on each side of the river. The the townships are are both in support of it because they understand the need and the history behind these bridges, the draws uh, from tourism and the help boosting the local businesses and the traffic concerns. And so it's easy, easier sell. So I have one more county meeting to go, and the meeting just happened to be canceled before I could get a chance to speak. But drawing up interest in what it is that you are speaking about, um, you ha- especially if it's something that involves residents of, of a particular town, you have to be careful in how you approach it. And I was expecting some sort of backlash from the people in my town, and I really didn't get it. Um, I really didn't get it. A lot of people in the town understand, a large majority of the people in the town understand the, necess- the necessity of these these particular bridges. So the cause that I particularly uh, am fighting for is easy to talk about. Number one, it's not costing me any money. Number two, it's not um, really life or death for me. Number three, it's heavily supported by local residents. Number four... I'm not a complainer when it comes to town and county officials. They don't even know who I am. I've never been in front of a board. So maybe that has some merit. So you have to pick your battles. So as a public speaker, you know, usually if I'm going into meetings at school, I do more listening than talking. I listen to what people have to say. And if somebody asks my opinion, I'll give it. More often than not, I'm quiet. And I don't speak up on purpose. Because the less that I speak up, when it comes time for me to actually say something, it's more important. So when I actually speak up and I'm actually stating an opinion, usually it has taken a little bit with a little bit more respect than someone who uh, fires off the cuff comments all the time. So things that I do is pretty methodical, whether it's a um, uh, 
a music board of music teachers that I work with, or if it is um, a committee at school that I happen to be sitting on, maybe a technology committee, or talking with students, or whether it's um, family gatherings. I don't usually say a whole lot at family gatherings. And when I do, I hope I'm taking a little bit more seriously. The things that I get passionate about, I hyper, I get hyper-focused on. And usually, it leads to some sort of success. Success is a moving bar. So you might not get exactly what you're looking for, but you may get part of it or something similar. So in my case, what we're trying to do is trying to stop the removal of one of these bridges. If we can do that, in my, in my mind, that's a success. Whether or not they get opened back up right away or renovated right away or just opened up for pedestrians or whatever, there are different layers of success. And you kind of have to plan for that. What is it you want? Shoot for the things that you want and understand other possibilities that might come up. And don't just be dead set on whatever it is that um, your final goal is. Because you may get close to your final goal and not meet everything, and that could still be considered success. So the thing is, if you're somebody who is shy or somebody who doesn't like to public speak, it goes back to that preparedness. You have to be prepared for what you're going to say. And if you're somebody who has never done it before, what I would encourage you to do is, number one, speak it out loud a bunch of times, um, whether or not you are... um, at home by yourself or speak it for somebody else you live with or eventually then record yourself and you you might catch your little ticks that you have as you're speaking or you may um, realize you say the same thing over and over and over and over and over and over. So when you do things like that and you listen back, you can learn from your experience And understand that when you do present, no matter how prepared that you are, you're always going to make mistakes. So you can't, you can't be too hard on yourself for the mistakes that you make. You're always going to forget to say something. You're always going to forget um, a part of what it is that you want to say. You might say something a little differently than you intended. That doesn't mean that your message doesn't get through. So when I went to the the first meeting, the, the really important meeting, I was expecting to give my speech and to have them vote right away and uh, stop the bridge from being removed and we were going to win. And what I didn't ex- realize is they had a few minutes set aside for me and they had an hour and a half more of stuff to do. So they didn't say a whole lot, but the county manager asked the highway superintendent to get the information on the bridge to him. And that was pretty much it. And I'll take that as a success because the county manager asked for information from the highway superintendent. And that means they will look into it. So it was not the step I was looking uh, looking for, but it was progress. So what I did next is a multifaceted approach. So I did media releases and I'm having the media do articles. We had a full page article written on this. I didn't know it was going to be full page. And other newspapers are in the works. So I have that going. Um, And if that doesn't work, I'm going to do uh, email and phone call campaign from everybody who signed the petition and or letter campaign. Basically, I'm not going to drop this. So you have to have plan B and plan C, plan D and plan E ready to go. And I'm not going to talk about all my other plans that I have, but I'm hoping not to use them. I'm hoping that the the dialogue catches on. People understand I'm not trying to butt heads with them, but I'm trying to gain their support and change the dialogue. That's really what I'm trying to do and trying to be uh, thoughtful about what other people are doing at the county levels. And maybe we can come up with creative solutions to get something done. And might not be what I'm hoping for, but this is something that came up sort of at the last minute. It was not something that I had planned on doing. And the skills of public speaking for me have come from being a musician, um, learning how to practice an instrument, 
learning how to perform on an instrument, learning how to teach students how to play an instrument, and doing this podcast, being interested in technology topics, and just really focusing on um, the presentation. And it's like a performance as far as uh, playing a musical instrument. You know, you have to practice. You have to get it right in the practice room. You have to be confident with it. When it comes to performing, the more prepared you are, the better the performance is going to be. And that performance is never going to be perfect. You'll make mistakes. You'll do things you didn't intend on doing. You'll you'll play something incorrectly. But you have to live with it and be happy with that performance because the little mistakes don't take over the whole performance. The same thing as I just mentioned with public speaking. So don't be afraid of public speaking. Uh, Public speaking can be really beneficial to you. Practice your speech in the car as you're driving. Practice it in front of a mirror. Practice your public speaking in front of a cell phone camera. And just really give it a shot. Don't be afraid of what other people are going to think. But you also have to have the mindset of, you know, this isn't TV. You don't have to be overly dramatic. Present your information the way that it should be presented in a calm, cool, collected voice, even if it's something you care uh, a whole lot about. Because if you're coming at an irrational um, volume or mentality, your lack of your your uh, respect will suddenly be gone. And if you are making a first impression, that sort of thing is important because you're building connections, you're gaining support from your listeners. And that's sort of what my my goal is here as a podcast host is tell you about things that I'm interested in and and sort of gain your support to get you to to chime in and email me and tell me about you listening to shows. A lot of people have a lot of different topics, so I try try to mix things up a little bit. And eventually I make connections with listeners and um, there's a lot of people that I have built friendships with from doing this show. And so I take that, uh, I sort of take that to heart and I appreciate it because this show is really just a, uh, an experiment every single time that I do it. And I try something a little different. I uh, talk about, sometimes I talk about things I've just learned. Sometimes I talk about things I'm very experienced with. Sometimes I want to bring somebody on the show and I want them to tell me uh, about certain things because I think it's an interesting topic. Um, So public speaking has never been something that I was super interested in doing, but I found it beneficial and I've found things that work. And hopefully as you're listening to this, if you have something that you uh, are working on and you have to give a presentation and you want a few pointers or tips, just send me an email, mrptechreviews at gmail.com. And I will be glad to just give some recommendations. And that's all they are. I'm not going to tell you what's going to work for you, but I'm going to tell you what worked for me and go from there. So I hope you found this somewhat useful. And even if it's not public speaking, whether it's just speaking in a meeting or speaking at work, speaking as a teacher, uh, speaking as a student, or whatever it is that you're working on and you're trying to prove a point, sometimes you have to build up to that and you have to put the work in before. It gives you a little bit more credibility. That's going to do it for this week, guys. Thanks so much for listening. We will see you next time.